have my tea and I have my coffee. So we're ready. Good morning. Good morning. It's very nice for me to be back in Nanjing. This is my third visit to Nanjing. Some years ago, I was here for an extended period, I think about six weeks, uh, working with the students. And then last year, a uh, year before last, uh, there was an ICT in conference in Nanjing. Uh, and I was fortunate to come to that conference. So I'm very happy to be back in Nanjing uh, again today. And I'd like to thank uh, Professor Gu for inviting me uh, and thank my guides for helping me uh, get here. So I want to talk a little bit about the research that's taken place in technology education internationally. And I think what will be interesting for you is to think about the situation in China. So how does the research in technology education in China relate to the research that's taking place in other countries and other areas? <coughs> I think a problem with the research is that the only research that I'm looking at is in English. So there's a need for all of you to publish your research in English journals. So when you do your study, uh, you write your thesis and your dissertation in Chinese, you must also do an article for a journal in English. Because I think technology education in China has a lot to teach the rest of the world. But at the moment, we can't read it. So you must publish in English. Okay? Yes, good. So I'd like to talk um, a little bit about uh, the research, the methodology for this research project, some of the findings I found about the type of research and also uh, the trends that are taking place in the research in technology education. There's very little research about research. So we all, we all do research and we all read the research, but we don't very often research about the research. Um, there were some studies that have been done in America uh, looking at all the PhD research in technology education, um, and that is all available online. Um, but apart from uh, some small research in England, uh, there's very little research about research. So I think here there's a gap, and this is helping to fill the gap. So what I looked at for my source information were journals and conferences. So these, uh, from 2006 to 2010, so I began in 2006. And between 6 and 10, I looked at design and technology education, the international journal, this is from England, and it's published by the English Design and Technology Teachers Association. Um, this journal is a Springer journal, 
uh, the editor is in the Netherlands, the International Journal of Technology and Design Education, and the Journal of Technology Education is an American journal. So it's published by the ITEEA, the International Technology and Engineering Teachers Association. So three journals and conferences. Uh, TURC is Technology Education Research Conference and it in this time, this conference was every two years in Australia. Um, this conference, Technology Education New Zealand, this conference is every two years in New Zealand. The PAT conference, Pupils' Attitude Toward Technology, is every year and it's in a different country every year. And in 2022, this conference will be in Nanjing. Mm. It's an international conference. Uh, so many researchers from all around the world. So you must come <laughs> to the PAT conference here in 2022. We have plenty of time uh, to plan for that conference. And then the design and technology teachers D and T in England. They also, in this period, had a conference where researchers present. So all these conferences are research conferences. So researchers come to present uh, their papers. So between 6 and 10, from the journals and the conferences, there were 472 manuscripts. 472 pieces of research. Okay, then in 2013, so the last one was 10, so then I extended the research for another three years to 13. Uh, same journals, but one more. So this journal, the Journal of Technology Studies, is also from America. And I added a conference, the ICTE conference, for the Asia Pacific. So this is also a conference you should go to and present your research. In 2021, this conference is in Taiwan. So it's easy, easy for you, okay? So you need to present your research at this conference. And it goes to different countries in the Asia Pacific. So this year, this conference in January was in Korea, and it was organized by Professor Sangbong, who was the conference organizer. Uh, Two years ago, this conference was in New Zealand. So it moves from country to country, uh, but just around the Asia Pacific area. So I added more research, and now I have 1,187 pieces of research, articles from journals and papers from conferences, from six to 13. And then I went to 15, so two more years. Uh, same journals, but one more. The Australasian Journal of Technology Education, mainly for Australia and New Zealand, uh, but other authors contribute as well. And then the same conferences. So up until 15, 1,498 uh, journal articles and conference presentations. <coughs> and then to 17, uh, same journals and same conferences, 
and now 1,652 manuscripts. So this, this is the data for this research. So the analysis is based on the published research and the presented research. So my methodology, um, journal and conference sources are limited. So there's no, no Chinese research. There's no, uh, there's no Eastern European research. Uh, there's no Russian research. Um, there's no Spanish research. And all of these countries, Russia, Spain, France, uh, the Eastern Europe countries, they all do technology education. So this picture that I present is limited just to those uh, sources which publish in English. So English only. The selection of papers is quite inclusive, quite broad. So I didn't use a strict definition of research. So if a publication or a presentation was more philosophical than research, or if it was more of an opinion paper, an opinion presentation, I included it. Because I was interested in what people are thinking about in technology education. So the definition of research is quite broad. I ended up with 27 topics. So in the first section from 2006, I went through all the articles and decided on a topic for each article, for each research presentation. And uh, using an inductive process, uh, first I had many, then it came down to 27. And each paper was coded only once. So the 1,600 and something papers, each one just had one topic one topic code. So sometimes I could read the abstract of the paper or the presentation and decide on the topic from the abstract, but for some I had to read through the paper to decide what the main topic was. So I did lots of reading and this is the 27, 27 categories. Uh, so every paper was put in one of these categories. So I had 20, 2006 to 10, 11 to 13, 2014 to 15, and then the total. And the number and the rank. So for each period, I looked at the number for each topic, so the number of papers for each topic, and then the rank for each topic. So that was the, the methodology uh, of the analysis. So for the journal publications, the journal with the most publications is the Springer International Journal. So in that period of time, it had about 320 articles in that journal. The Journal of Technology Education, the English Journal, uh, the American Journal, and the Australian Journal. So this one has the most publications. And for conference presentations for the whole period, uh, the PAT conference had the most 
presentations. Partly because the PAT conference sometimes happens twice each year. So there's a PAT conference in a country, but also every year there's a PAT conference as part of the American conference as well. It's a small, it's a small part. So those papers were included. So these conferences, those three, they only happen every two years. So this one is sometimes twice per year, and this one is the American conference, uh, and it happens each year. So just looking at the number of publications uh, for this period, so the number of articles in the journals per year, presentations per year, and then total per year. So you can see this period, this period, and this period at these numbers. So it went down, and then it went up a little bit. But this was the highest, the highest period um, per year. So this is the total over the period. Okay. Any is it clear? Any questions? It's quite half in here. Can I go? <laughs> This is an opportunity for you to practice your English <laughs> by asking questions and see if I can understand your question. I'm waiting for you. No, not that later. <laughs> so this partly comes to answering your question. So here I looked at the most common topic for a particular journal. So, for example, the American Journal uh, design was the most common topic in 1617. And in 1415, the most common was STEM. Um, in America, at this time, STEM was becoming very important. So, you can see why there was a focus on STEM research uh, during this period. And I think the change, because this reflects America, the change in America from STEM to more of a focus on design um, reflects a little bit the, the new American standards for technology education, uh, which have more of a focus on design than in the past. So I think that you can see a reason for this in America. Um, this is the international journal, the Springer Journal, the one that has the most uh, publications. And the most common research topic was student learning. So 19% of all the articles published were about how students learn and student learning. And it's consistent. 
So in 1617, it was 19. In 1415, it was 11 percent. So the focus on learning in this journal seems to be consistent. Uh, in the other journals, uh, this is the English journal and the focus on design and design in those two periods. That's also logical because design is very strong in England. Design and technology curriculum in England has been very strong for a long time and England has a strong design culture. There's a, a government department called the Design Council, for example, which is very strong and promotes design education and the work of designers. So I think it's, it's logical that in the English journal, uh, the focus on the research is about design. The Journal of Technology Studies, which is from uh, America, um, in this period, they did not have a, a journal, but before, in 1914-15, sorry, 2014-15, uh, the main focus was on mobile learning, which is quite interesting because that's different from the main, uh, the other uh, journals and the other conferences. And then the Australian journal, uh, most 31%, so almost one third of all the articles in this journal were about curriculum. Curriculum development, uh, curriculum evaluation, uh, all aspects related to curriculum. So this is the most common conference research topic. So these are the conferences that we looked at. The one in Australia, the PAT conference, the most common conference, the conference in New Zealand, the American conference, and our Asia Pacific conference, ICTD conference. So you can see in the years, how the changes. This is just the most common topic. So most common in that year, the conference was about values. Values in technology. Teaching values. Uh, what are the values of technology education? Uh, then the next year it was STEM, and then the next year it was teaching. Uh, here again, you can see the American conference, STEM, STEM, STEM. So in America, STEM is all over this period, uh, STEM was very important. And also, um, the funding, the research funding organization in America, the National Science Foundation, which funds research in technology, had a lot of money for STEM research. So the researchers liked the money. <laughs> so they went where the money was. Uh, and the money was uh, in STEM. Uh, our conference, the Asia Pacific Conference, is often about what's happening in each country. Thank God you'll remember that from your conference. There are many people from different countries sharing the curriculum and the research in their country. So that's a feature, an interesting feature of this, uh, this conference. So the countries are Australia, New Zealand, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea. Japan, Korea. That's it. I think. Vietnam, not Vietnam. 
and the US, of course. Yeah, yeah. So all those countries are members of um, this conference. So often it's about country or the curriculum. So explaining the curriculum uh, in a particular country. It's interesting that the PAT conference, Pupils' Attitude Toward Technology, in this year, focused on attitude. Because attitude is the name of the conference. And this conference began uh, with a small group of people who were researching about pupils' attitude. Uh, that's how it began. So now, the conference covers many different topics, but still, it has uh, a, a focus on uh, attitude. So now I'm looking overall, the research journals and the conferences together, all the papers um, in the different periods. So the most common over this period was 9% of all research was related to design. Then in 11 to 13, it was STEM, and there's a big American influence here. Uh, other countries also, but uh, mainly America. Um, but a lot of research about curriculum, almost 10%, and then in the most recent period, most of the research has been about teaching. But overall, over the whole period, 6 to 17, all 1,600, almost 10% are about curriculum. So the most common topic over this period of time, the last 10, 11, 12 years, the most common research topic in technology education has been related to curriculum. But these are the, the rank of the frequency over the total period. So as I said, curriculum was number one. Uh, design, teaching, learning, STEM, thinking, teacher training, attitudes. So it's interesting in technology that attitudes is so important. Number eight, over all this period of time, most common is attitudes. I think of research in science or maths or history, and I don't think there's as much research in those areas um, about attitudes. Technological literacy and mobile or online learning. So again, it's interesting, I think, for you to think about the research you're familiar with in China and see if you think there's some kind of correlation here uh, or maybe it's quite different. It would be an interesting research topic for somebody. So for those of you doing your masters, when you come to do your PhD, this is a good topic. Compare the research in the rest of the world with the research in China. Make that, uh, that comparison I think would be, would be very interesting. So these are the areas that are less common. So they're becoming less popular over time. So here's the time, 2006, 2017. Uh, this one is research related to literacy, technological literacy. So it was very important here but now, over time, it's becoming less important. This is about values. 
So there's also less research occurring over time related to values in technology education. Uh, this one is about systems, technological systems. We haven't mentioned that, but that was one of the 27 categories of areas. Research about systems is also going down. And this is research about classroom interaction. So interaction between students and teachers or interaction between students and students. So there's also less research uh, about um, interaction. Okay, it's still clear. These are the areas that are becoming more common over time. Um, STEM, of course. So we've seen in the journals and the conferences that research related to STEM is gone down a little bit, but is still quite uh, common in, in this period. And this, of course, is because many countries now are... Let me just stop for a moment. Stop and then I can have a drink of my <laughs> Okay, so these are the more common areas of research STEM, of course, uh, because we know for many countries STEM is developing quickly. Um, and for technology, the movement for STEM, the introduction for STEM, can be good or it can be bad. Because STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, sometimes is just science. See STEM, and maybe it's the science department that's teaching STEM. So it's very important for technology education to be prominent, to be researching, and to be active in STEM. Because if we don't promote the T, the technology in STEM, then no one else will. So it's really important. This, this one is very important, I think, uh, for us as a research area. This slide is related to primary and early childhood technology education. So technology education from K, kindergarten, yeah, to the end of primary, maybe grade six. So in many countries are realizing that this is the foundation of technology education. You need to start teaching technology in primary school because that sets the foundation for middle school and high school and university. If there's no technology in primary, it's very difficult to teach the students everything they need to know in uh, middle school or, or in high school. So it's good, I think, 
that this is increasing. Um, research about particular countries is also increasing, not very much, from 26 to about 19. So the rank has increased a little bit, but still it's, it's low, it's at rank number 19. But it's becoming more important. And research about gender. So mainly the gender research is about girls in technology. And it's interesting here that the majority are <laughs> girls, which is good. Because the tradition in many countries for technology education was that girls did home economics and boys did industrial studies or technical studies. So historically there was a division between boys and girls, but now we have technology education together and it needs to be relevant for both boys and girls. So the increase in this research, uh, uh, sorry, this one, gender, is, is very important for the future of technology education. This is the working plan. topic has changed the most going up or down and the biggest change is STEM. So in this early period 2006 STEM was about rank number 12 and then in 11 to 13 it was number one. So of all the journals and all the conferences the 1,600 and something articles uh, STEM is the topic that has changed the most. Uh, this line here is about learning. So that's changed from about six, eight to number two. And that research focuses on how students learn about technology. So I think it's very good that that one is increasing because we need to understand how students learn technology in order to be able to teach it well. And then the other one is design. So design, research in design has decreased from most common to about rank four. So not very much different, still important um, design. And I think particularly in those countries where the curriculum is called design and technology. So in Australia, the technology curriculum is called Design and Technology. In England, also, the technology curriculum is called Design and Technology. Uh, and other countries also include the word design in uh, the name of the curriculum. So these were the most common topics from 6 to 10, and these were the most common from 16 to 17. So it's a comparison. And if we look at the ones that have decreased, gone from, I 
design, as I said in the last, uh, has gone from number one to number four. Technological literacy has gone way down. It was number number 2.5, uh, and now it's, it's disappeared. I'm not sure why. Why? Because for many countries, technological literacy is still a very important idea. It's, it's the goal of technology education. New Zealand, America, Australia, China also, uh, state that the goal of technology education is technological literacy. So you would think if technological literacy is that important, um, you wonder why it's, uh, there's less research about it. I, I'm not sure. Another good research topic. Why is there less research on technological literacy? It's a good master's research. So now those areas that have gone up, more common, teaching, which is very good, I think. We need to understand about whether we, the way we teach is effective. The way we teach, does it enhance technological literacy? It's a very important question. So it's good, that's going up. And also learning, so teaching and learning. The two most important research areas in this period of time, which I think is very good. And I think um, also indicates that the profession of technology education, all the researchers in technology education, um, not so much worried about curriculum now. Uh, curriculum is not not quite as important, but what's important is teaching and learning. So I think that focus is a very good focus for our research. So just to summarise again the trends, so going up in rank, STEM, primary and research about the country and going down is values, systems and literacy. This one also, I'm not sure why, because values in technology education are very important. Uh, a lot of our teaching is to help our students develop values related to technology. Um, so why there's less research on values, I don't know. So now let me summarise uh, some of the trends. It seems that over the whole period, research about design and curricula is always important. And I think into the future will continue to be important. This is like our, our bread and butter. That's an English expression. I'm not sure what you would say in Chinese. So maybe uh, you would say noodles. <laughs> our noodle research is, so it's the basic. It means the basic. So this is like the basic food. So what would be the basic? Rice. Rice, OK. Yeah. Rice. So our rice research uh, is design and curriculum. So it seems that it will always be a common area of research, but there's a trend toward teaching and learning. It's interesting to think about what the external forces on research are. So when people decide what topic to research, what are the impacts that are making people make those decisions? One, I think, is over a period of time, 
there has been a shift in our views of learning in technology education. Historically, we had quite, quite a cognitive approach to student learning. But that has shifted, I think, to more of a social constructivist approach. So um, we, there's now a philosophy that students construct their own learning, and in technology, they do that in a social context. So often, students work together in groups, as they're developing their technological literacy. So I think one of the philosophical changes over time has been a change in our views of learning. I think in the future, the pressure for research about sustainability and environmental issues will influence our research. So more and more publicity is taking place about pollution, the environment. In Australia now, we have big bushfires, bigger than, than any we've had in the past. And our summer has only just started. So in Australia, at the very beginning of summer, we have the biggest bushfires that we've ever had in our history. So I think this type of news is going to impact our research. The question will be, how can we use technology education to help students think about the environment and to think about sustainability? Another influence, I think, is the uh, focus on literacy and numeracy. In many countries, particularly in primary education, what's most important for teachers is literacy and numeracy. For example, in Australia, all students in year three and year five, every year, do a test, a national test, for literacy and numeracy. So it's, very, it's a very important area. But the problem is the teachers focus on that. And so areas like art and technology education get squashed out of the curriculum. So I think an important area of research for us is how technology education can be used to enhance numeracy and literacy. And there is already some good research which says if you teach maths through technology, student achievement is higher than if you te just teach maths by itself. So using technology to achieve literacy and numeracy goals, I think, is um, an area of important research which will come in the future. And of course STEM, uh, the T in STEM. We need to research that and we need to be active in promoting the technology component <coughs> of STEM activities. All educational systems seem to be increasingly accountable. So every dollar that's spent in a school, every program that's undertaken in a school, um, there's increasing requirements for accountability. So you have to provide evidence that your curriculum works what really works the best. So we have to present evidence that technology education enhances technological literacy. So when the government says 
Uh, maybe technology education is not so important. Maybe numeracy and literacy are important. Then we can say, well, here's the evidence that technology education is important because it can do all, all of these things. Global connectedness is becoming more significant. So more researchers in different countries are working together. So it seems like, and I think it will increase, that um, research projects will be more multinational not just one country, but will um, be the result of researchers from many countries working together. I also think in future, the maker culture, the maker culture is going to have an influence. Um, I know it's significant in China, uh, also in Australia, um, and it's, it can be important for technology education because I think technology educators were the original makers. So before the maker movement became popular, we were doing it. We were the makers. So again, I think, Technology education has a lot to contribute to the social maker movement. We read more and more about the 21st century skills. Um, skills of creativity, innovation, problem solving, uh, working in groups, group communication, these types of skills we read in the paper and we see on the news and in education documents, we <coughs> see a lot of discussion about the 21st century skills. So I think in future technology education research is going to relate more to these skills. So how can doing technology education enhance creativity? How can students learn to work in groups by doing technology education? These types of questions I think will be important <coughs> research questions into the future. <coughs> Economic rationalism is a problem. It seems that there is less and less money all the time. If you have more money, you're very lucky because most schools, most research in technology education, it's harder and harder to get funding for school projects or for uh, research in, in technology education. So this is going to have an influence, a force, an external force on our research. And finally, the focus on assessment is a problem for technology education um, because for, for a number of reasons. As I said before, in primary education, literacy and numeracy are the most important. So that's bad, that's a problem for us uh, in technology. In high school, upper secondary school, for university entrance, technology education is often not accepted. Physics, maths, chemistry, those sorts of subjects have a higher status than technology education. <coughs> uh, so research about this is also uh, important. In Australia now, a technology subject that we offer in high school is called engineering design. It's 
It's part of the technology curriculum. And it has just been accepted as one of the subjects for university entrance. Uh, because we could demonstrate that students who did engineering design at high school, when they go to university and do engineering or architecture or industrial <coughs> design, uh, they do very well because they have a foundation uh, in, in secondary school. So at a number of levels, I think assessment uh, is a force that determines what uh, areas that we're going to research. So in conclusion, we do have a significant body of research in technology education. Maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago, there was not, not very much. People complained that there was little research in technology. No, nobody can complain now because there is a significant amount of research in technology. It seems to be consistent focuses on curriculum and focuses on the importance of design, uh, but increasingly a focus on students learning and teaching is becoming more important. But this is not an international picture. This is just English. My apologies. <laughs> But it would be interesting, and now it's your turn to talk, to think about how um, this picture of research in the last 12 or 13 years, um, whether there's similarities to China uh, or whether it's different. And if you have any questions about this, or we can just talk generally about technology education, uh, if you like. So now it's open for uh, your your discussion. Thank you.